So becoming aware of the scope of the problem and then what do you do in a workplace or what do you do in your organization to address the problem and try to contain the problem uh, through what investigative measures, uh, uh, how do you uh, really define the problem and, and sell it to your organization that we got a problem, we got to do something about it. And the third component would be putting the metrics to it so that you can understand where your successes and failures are in dealing with the problem. So basically those three components, it's the awareness, it's uh, defining and putting together a, an approach towards containing the problem, and then measuring the scope of the problem and how do you contain it. So, so Dave is with Family Dollar and you have how many employees? We have about 60,000 employees nationwide. 60,000 and uh, Pamela Webster from Advance Auto also joined us and she also runs a retail uh, risk shop that has a lot of exposure to this kind of thing. So obviously the more employees you've got, the more exposure you've got. One of the interesting things to me was when I did the research for this, really looking at, on the one hand, how significant workers' comp fraud is, but then recognizing that in the broader scheme of things, when you include healthcare fraud and the employer component of work comp fraud and the service provider component, it's a really big deal and rather complex. Do you think that the way we're dealing with it now is any is materially different than the way we did 10 or 20 years ago? I do not, and I think that's the challenge to all of us. I think that there's a general acceptance in business and society in the United States to accept fraud and not really to, to treat it as something that they can do anything about when in fact we can do something about. And then taking a look at how we in businesses as well as in our own organizations can be more collaborative between <clears throat> excuse me, the different components of the organization, for example, the risk management uh, operation does not talk as much to the healthcare benefits side of the operation and vice versa. So how can we, uh, as managers, both in risk and both in benefits, come together and share our experiences and our expertise to address, one, again, focus on the problem, make sure that the health benefits, the medical side of the organization understands the bleeding that is taking place financially due to fraud, then how can we work together to address it and deal with it? Yeah, because I mean, fundamentally, fraud is fraud, right? And the way people rip us off, so to speak, is not uncommon across different types of fraud, right? And so you can really leverage the techniques that are used investigatively and otherwise through uh, special investigative units and third parties that specialize in these kinds of services to really get your hands around it. But I understand, you know, from a, from a, a taxpayer perspective, the challenge that we all know the country has with controlling Social Security fraud and Medicare fraud, which you hear about every day, is just off the chart numbers, and you just you kind of lose a sense of whether it's really controllable or not. You know, and you get the, yep. and then you look at this in the scheme of things, it may look small, but actually, real important to the effectiveness of our businesses, right? Exactly, it's a real hit to the bottom line. That's really not really well recognized. There's a real opportunity there to to control those costs and pass the savings on to our communities, our businesses, our family members. The, the, the cost of this problem, when I go back to the beginning, the, the $80 billion a year cost, that translates to about $1,800 a year per family. It's a cost that's, that's being passed to them that they really don't, don't know that's there. So again, that's an opportunity, and we do have plenty of tools out there which were probably underutilized in our organizations through the expertise, through uh, our TPAs through healthcare providers and fraud expertise uh, that they may bring to the table. Our insurance carriers have some have some expertise, and then there are, there are other partners out there that just specialize in drilling down and addressing fraud and helping to put together processes and procedures to help us manage and, and monitor and measure the, the fraud success or failures. So, so, just to highlight one tool that maybe didn't exist ten years ago or five years ago is. Do you think predictive analytics has much ability to contribute to controlling this exposure any better? I think it does. I think if you said predictive analytics 10 years ago, nobody would know what you're talking about. Right. So I think, again, that's another tool that's underutilized. So I think predict predictive analytics is something, a tool that we can use in a much more aggressive, proactive way to hit this problem head on, as well as, again, measure uh, the successes and failures. Right. Well, Dave, thanks for spending some time talking about this. Thanks for doing the session with us. Thank and, you. Uh, it's good to see you again. Always good working with you. All right, man.